Brethren, I welcome you to this service in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I want to thank God for bringing us to the second uh, service of the month of July. And this second service, we are continuing with our uh, monthly series, The Prize of Love. Today we are presenting The Prize of Love Part 2. And I believe that uh, as you join us today, you are going to benefit from it. And may the Lord give you the grace to show love and to encounter love in its reality. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, there is none to be compared with God's love. There is no love to be compared with God's love. Praise the Lord. You can't compare God's love with another love. The love of man is always... It always looks like fake because the Spirit of God is not always there. Though there are many that love really, that really show love. But today we are going to bring to you the series, The Prize of Love. The Prize of Love Part 2. And today we are going to talk about correction and chastening. Correction and chastening is a way of showing love that is love when someone corrects you when uh, someone chastens you when 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 god does one thing or the other to show you that he's not happy with what he, you are doing is trying to correct you same with humans if i love you i will always tell you when you are going wrong and that is how to show love that is how to show that you love someone Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Show someone love by correction. Do not insult the person. Do not embarrass the person. But just show love in its form. In its genuine form. Not that you want to you want to show that you know much. No. It's just part of love. When your partner, when your your the person you say you are in love with, when he's going wrong. You have to bring the person back. You have to correct the person so that the person will retrace, will retrace his or her step not to go into problems, not to go into troubles. Praise the Lord. And today, the prize of love is what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about correction. We're going to talk about chastening. We're going to talk about what you are going to do to show someone genuine love. When you say, to someone that you love the person and you 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 are you you cannot tell the person when the person is going wrong uh no that is not love you are not showing love you want the person to fall into a ditch you want the person to fall into trouble that is not love that is not love i don't know why some people are like that but it is not love the true love true love brings about chastening corrections praise the lord chastening and corrections Chastening and corrections is part of love. That is love. Chastening and correction is love. Praise the Lord. Chastening and correction. That is love. God chastens us to correct us. God does all kinds of things to us. He gives us sign and the reason why we must be corrected. Praise the Lord. And today I want us to go to the book of Hebrews chapter 12. Hebrews chapter 12. And I'm going to read verse 6. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 6. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, and scourges every son whom he receive. Any child of God is bound to be chastened, is bound to be corrected by God himself. Sometimes in one way or the other, sometimes... You know, you may not know that what you are going through is that God is just trying to correct you. Maybe you want to take a step that you think will bring, bring a lot of success to you. And then, in the process, you fall into trouble. God just allowed it to happen to use it to warn you. So that you don't go to where you will fall into a ditch and be destroyed. He loves you so much. So also, you ought to love your neighbor the same way. When you see your neighbor going the wrong way, try to bring that your neighbor back to the track. 
bring them back to the track so that they don't go into destruction. That is how to show love. That is how to show love. Praise the Lord. That is how to show love. And I know that as you listen to the message today, God will show you love. If you endure chastening, God dealeth with you as with sons. Whatever that is happening, look at it that God allows it to happen to use it to correct you. Then you check your ways, check the things that you do, and take correction. Correct yourself. Correct yourself. If you are able to endure the correction that is coming from your friend, or coming from your father, or coming from your mother, as in this case we are talking about God himself. He chastens men, he corrects men in one way or the other. And that does not mean that he hates us. No, that shows that he loves us. That is the kind of love we are going to talk about today. And God will help us to understand. God will help us to show the same kind of love to our loved ones. You call someone your loved one, but you can't correct that person. You can't correct the person in love. You can't correct the person even as your own child, even as your own daughter, even as your own son. You have to correct the person in love. You have to show the person that you are God. You have to show the person that you are, I mean, that, 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 that God, you, you are, uh, God sent you to him or to her to act as God to that person. Not acting to, to, to show yourself up, but to correct the person. God brings people together so that you will help yourself to grow. Not that you are God to that person, no, but that you grow together. That you grow together. It's not every small thing that you get flared up. Every little thing you get flared up. That is not fair. That is not fair. That is not fair. And I know that we will receive that correction this day. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we receive that correction this day. Praise the Lord. We receive that correction this day. May God help us as we flow in this message today. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, for whomsoever the Lord loveth, he chasteneth and scourgeth every son whom he receives. And if you endure chastening, God dealeth with you as with sons. If you can endure it, he will deal with you as a son, as a daughter. If you don't rebel against him, if you don't rebel against others, against, against others who love you, the person will show more love. The person will show more love. For what son is he whom the father cannot chasten? If you are a son, if you are a daughter, and your father cannot correct you, your mother cannot correct you, your brothers cannot correct you, then we don't know the kind of son you are. We don't know the kind of a child you are. We don't even know the kind of relationship you are into if you cannot correct one another. If you cannot correct one another, then there is something wrong somewhere. There is something wrong somewhere. And that is what is going on these days, that even if a, a, a son uh, is being corrected by the mother or by the father, there's always the spirit of rebellion coming up from the child, coming out of the child's behavior. And then you will see that this child doesn't want to be corrected. Praise the Lord. You will see that she, he or she doesn't want to be corrected. And that is not good. That, what kind of a child is that? What kind of a child cannot be corrected by the, by, the, by the parents? What kind of a human being cannot be corrected by a friend? Then that, that, that is not friendship. That's not friendship. And so today, I want us to know that God wants us to be corrected. God wants us to show love in correction. When you correct someone, you are showing love. How much you love that person. Praise the Lord. You are showing how much you love that person. You don't want the person to, 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 to go astray, to fall into troubles. So that you can retrace your, back, your, your, your feet back. 
to trace it back. If you are going into a wrong place, a friend will tell you, brother, sister, don't do this. It will not pay you. It will not be good in the sight of God. That is, that is, is trying to correct you. It's not trying to lord himself or herself over you. Just showing love. He's just showing love by correction. Praise the Lord. Just showing love by correction. And I believe that as you listen to today's message, God is going to do something tremendous in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Hebrews chapter 12. I just want to read from verse 1 so that you understand what we are talking about. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does which do so easily beset us. There are sins that beset us that we don't even know is a big problem. We don't even know that it is a big, 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 big problem. We don't know. We don't know that it's a big problem. Let me take you to Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 3. Maybe you understand it better there. Proverbs chapter 3. The book of Proverbs chapter 3. Hallelujah. Proverbs chapter 3 verse 12. For whom the Lord loveth, he corrects, even as a father, the son in whom he delighted. He corrects whomsoever the father loves, he will correct that person. If your mother loves you, it will correct you. If your mother is not correcting you, it allows you to go and do whatever you like. It means that, that your mother does not love you. That your father does not love you. If he sends you or allows you to go and do wrong things and come back home and stay without being corrected, that man whom you call your father, whom you call your mother, whom you call your friend, and knows that you are doing the wrong thing and does not correct you, is digging a grave, digging a grave against you. And do not fall into that grave. Do not fall into that destruction. If you are a child of God, you need to take corrections from God and take corrections from men as well. When you are doing wrong, wrong thing, you should know that you are doing wrong thing. The Spirit of the Lord will always pinch you to correct you. That what you are about to do is not good. If you are about to defraud someone or uh, do what they call 419 or Yahoo, you should understand. You should understand that you are doing the wrong thing. You should understand that you are doing the wrong thing. If someone corrects you and says, Brother, this thing that you are planning to do is not good. That is love. Because the end thereof is destruction. If your father cannot correct you, bring you back to your normal senses, that your father is not a good man. If your mother cannot correct you, when you are going to dupe someone, when you are going to defraud someone, when you are going to do wrong things, that your mother is not a good mother, that your father that allows you to do that is not a good father. The same way, if God sees that you are going wrong, and he does not correct you, is not a good God. Any God that you know allows you to go and do things that you are not supposed to do is not a good father. It's not a good God. It's not a good God. Those of us who play religion and your religion allows you to do wrong things, your religion allows you to, to go into drugs, to go into stealing, to go into lying. And it's not, a, it's not a big deal in that religion, then there is a problem with the God of that religion. There is a problem with the God of that religion. And so, for whom the Lord loveth, he corrects, even as a father, the son in whom he delights. Happy is the man that findeth wisdom and the man that gets understanding 
of love in correction. If you understand the love that is embedded in correction, you will be a happy man. You will be a happy woman. Happy is that person who understands this thing we are talking about called love. The price of love. You have to correct that person that you say you love. And the correct that person in love is not in derision, is not in, in disgrace, but in love. Show love to that person that you say is your loved one by correcting that person as a child of God, correcting that person as, 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 as a man with conscience, as a woman with conscience. Do not use it to show the person that uh, you are more righteous than that person. No, it is just that you have to show love to that person so that both of you will learn from it. You have understood it earlier before him or her. And then when you, you are able to correct that person, the person will learn as well. That does not mean that you are more righteous than that person. Or that person is a sinner more than you are. No. It's just the price of love. The person may hate you. The person may even pl plot against you because of correcting that person. That is the price that you have to pay to make sure that your friend does not enter into trouble. In a no distant future, he or she will understand why you had to resist him or to resist her from doing what she or he wanted to do. So keep correcting the person in love. Keep loving that person. Keep showing love to that man. Keep showing love to that your son, to that your daughter by correcting that person. The person may not be happy with you, but that is it. That is the price of love. That is the price of love. So do not worry about that. Do not worry yourself about that. Just correct that person. Even if that person is your wife, even if that person is your husband, try as much as, pos as possible to correct that person in love. Not by fighting, not by quarreling. Just call that person and say, Oh honey, please come. I have something to discuss with you. You are my husband. I have seen what you are doing of, of late. I don't understand it. And I suspect that it is not a good thing. Can you tell me the benefit of what you are doing? Now you are trying to defraud someone. You are trying to defraud a company. What is the benefit? You, you may benefit the money, the, 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 the thing you are getting from that person now. But tomorrow you will pay for it. And all of us will pay for it as a family. Because there is no sin that will go unpunished. No sin. We go unpunished. Praise the Lord. That is why God came into our lives. That is why Christ came to us to correct us. To put us right. So that we can make a better society. So that we can create a better living space for humanity. Praise the Lord. So that we can do things the way it's supposed to be. We cannot just begin to act as fools. We can't continue to act as fools. Praise the Lord. We can't do that. That is not of God. That is not of God. So we'll go back to uh, Hebrews chapter 12. And I'm going to start again from verse 1. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which do so easily beset us. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us. The race we are running as Christians is a divine race. It is a race that is, is based on correction. Any step you take, you must see something to correct. You must see something to correct in your life. Or to correct in the life of those who are running with you. It's not a sin to correct others. It is showing love. Because the God that we are serving is a God of love. 
and so let us show love by correcting us, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Jesus is the author and the finisher of our faith. He is the love personified. He is the one that came and gave his only life. His life, he died for us to show love. He died for us. He took our pains away to show love. Look at that kind of a price. Spring price for the sins of his friends. Spring price for the sins of, his, of, of humanity. This is what God is teaching all of us. This is what we ought to do to one another. You may not die for another person because you cannot be another Jesus. But there is a way, there are things that you have to do that will help that person to live well. There are things that you have to do. You cannot have enough money to feed and to, to throw around and you see somebody suffering without showing love to that person. You don't give just because you want to receive from God. Because I hear a lot of people say, when I give, you receive. Giving to receive from God is not love. You are just being selfish. If the purpose of why you give is to receive, yes, I know where you give, you shall receive. Good measures, pressed together, sh shaking together, pressed together, running over, shall come to you. But if you give, not because of love, but because you want to get more from God, you may be making a mistake. That is not how to show love. There is something attached to it now. There is benefit attached to it. But in showing the real love of God, the agape love of God, you are not doing it because of what you are going to benefit. No. You are not going to help somebody because you want to benefit something. If the benefit comes, okay, but that should not be the prime purpose for why you want to help somebody. You are a millionaire, you are a billionaire, I see a lot of them flouting money, flouting cars, even using their cars to park in their, in their parlor as, 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 what, what, as a decoration, as furniture. Parking a car worth of $200,000. Of $250,000. Packing a Lamborghini in your parlor as, as, as a toy. As a decorative material. Whereas people are dying of hunger on your street. People are dying of hunger in your, in your community. What kind of a man are you? You call yourself a politician. You call yourself a businessman. Yet, all that you are sowing we never benefit you in future. All the money you are, you are gathering, you are accumulating, is not for the benefit of, of one another, of your community, of your brethren. You are just doing that. You are just accumulating where to, to show off, to intimidate people, so that you can come out in public and, and, and speak as if you are God. You are not God. Brother, you have to show love. If you are a politician, you are elected to represent people, when this money comes, in whichever way you get that money, nobody knows. But I know that you, most of you are paid handsomely, especially those that are, that are politicians in Nigeria or in, in, in African nations. You are paid handsomely. And some of you used to steal. I mean, to, to just be 100% sincere. Most of you used to steal. What is meant for the entire community, you steal it and you convert it to yourself. And then you use it to buy a car and pack in a, in a, in a, in a house as a toy, as a decorative material in your house. And somebody close to your house, somebody very close to, 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 to you is suffering. And when that person approaches you for help, the way you answer the person is as if, is as if uh, the, 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 the person is not even a creature of God. Because God gave you an opportunity to benefit from, from what he created. And you are using it now to intimidate that person. 
Go and suffer for your sin. Go and go and struggle as I have struggled to make your own money. But we know how you struggle your own. We know that you are taking all that belongs to us as a community. You are taking it to yourself only. But you can't even help someone. When you want to help that person, you will want the whole world to know that you are the person helping that person. But actually, that fund is meant for all of us. But you have cornered it to yourself. But remember that God is watching us in love. God is just allowing you to continue doing what you are doing because He loves you. He wants you to repent. And this message can make you to repent. This message can turn your life around so that at the end you will be able to enjoy what you have, what God has blessed you with or what you have struggled to get. Praise the Lord. When I see such things, I mean, it bleeds my heart. It bleeds my heart. That people have opportunity to help and they can't help. They are amassing it to themselves. They will, they will reserve a job for a, their own child that is not yet born yet. And whereas a graduate that graduated some years ago is roaming the street. No job to do. Nothing to do. And then you are keeping that job for your own son or for your own daughter that is not even yet born. Or maybe it's just a toddler that when that one grows up, it will take over that job or that post. That is wrong. That is not why God put you there. Or you think you are there by your own power? No. It's not by your power, neither is it by your might, but by the Spirit of the Lord. You may have done one crooked thing or the other, but if God wants to stop it, He can stop it. As you are doing those crooked things or the other, in order to make it, God may be just laughing at you. Thinking that you think you are smart. You see? You think you are smart. But God just allowed it to happen. To give you a chance to repent. To give you a chance to change. To give you a chance in love to change. So that you know that the position that you occupy today is for you to be a blessing to others. Looking unto Jesus. How did how would Jesus approach a man of this nature? How would Jesus address this kind of issue? That you take what belongs to the masses, what belongs to, to, to the community, and what belongs to others, and you collect it only yourself, you pocket it, you allow other people to suffer, and you can't even help? No, how would Jesus look at Onto it, how would Jesus look at it? We are all looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. We are Christians, and when you see Christians do certain things, you can't believe that they are Christians. When you see them rob others of their own, of their of their own sweat, you won't you won't believe it that that person is a Christian. You will not believe it. Yet we are supposed to be imitators of Christ. The Bible says, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross because of the love that he had for us. Because of the love that he had for us, we look unto him. He endured the pains on the cross. He endured the insults. He endured the whippings. He endured the crowns of thorn for you and for me. Why can't you endure a little pain for someone who is in need around your life. Why can't you sell that car that you parked somewhere, you are not using it? Why can't you sell it and use it to, to, to do something that will benefit the community? And use it to train someone whose father or whose parents are dead, the orphans, the widows. Many of them are begging. Many of them have resorted to prostitution because they lost their husbands. Because they lost their breadwinners. Hmm? They lost their parents. But you that you are representing us, you that you are the one that is supposed to cut out for us in the community, we elected you, we appointed you, God made you to be the only one that is rich in that family, you can't help. Why? No, why? We are here to correct ourselves. 
It is time for us to repent and change. Let us repent and be converted. That is correction. If you are a politician, if you are a businessman, you are making money, God is helping you, you are, you, you, you are accumulating wealth, use it to touch the lives of others. That is the only happiness that any sane person will get from having wealth. When you touch the life of others, that is the only thing that will make you happy. For a sane person, someone whose head is, is correct, should know that whatsoever that God gives to that person and he uses it to touch the lives of others, that is the only thing that will make the person happy. For me, and for a majority of others who love genuinely, you should love those who are around you. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who, for the joy that was set before him, endured the cross. There is this joy in helping others. There is this joy in, 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 in sharing the pains of others. He endured the cross for our sins. And there is a joy that he was, he was enjoying it. Somebody that went to the cross to be killed because of another person. He, he, he derives joy from it. He derives joy from it. This is the kind of God, this is the kind of relationship we want for mankind. For mankind. If you love someone, why should you go and kill that person? Jesus died for the love he has for others. And you, your own, you say you love that person, you go and kill that person. So that you can make money rituals and get money. And become, and become rich and wealthy. And begin to intimidate everybody around your life. Why don't you pay the genuine price? The genuine price of love. By doing the right thing. Loving your neighbor as you love yourself. Loving anybody around your life as you love yourself. Anybody that comes across you should feel this love. The kind of love that Christ taught us by going to the cross of Calvary, having joy to die for another person's sin, for other people's sin, taking whips, taking canes, being spat on because of another person's sin. He, he volunteered. Volunteered himself to suffer for others so that we can be saved. Can we not see, take correction from this? Can we not see this as the real genuine love that's supposed to exist between man and man? Eh? Between human beings? Between husband and wife? Between a man and a, and, and a child? And the child, a man and the son, a woman and the daughter, is this not the kind of love that Jesus taught us? Why should you kill your father for a ritual so that you can get money? Your father that gave birth to you, even if he's not the one that gave birth to you, why should you kill someone in order to get money? Is it right? No, it is not right. Looking unto Jesus, Jesus will frown at it. Jesus will not be happy that someone who is created in the image and likeness of God is killing another person who has the image and the likeness of God. Jesus will never be happy looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy of it endured the cross for you and for me. For the joy of it he endured the cross, despising the shame. Shame. He was paraded everywhere. He was paraded on the streets of Jerusalem, on the street where criminals were. In fact, to worsen the matter, he was crucified along with armed robbers. And so he is liking to be an armed robber. He is liking to an armed robber. For doing nothing. 
just to show love to us. Why can't we do the same? You may not do exactly the same, but there, there is a portion of love that you show, that, you sh that, 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 that will show you that you are doing the right thing. Not, not destroying others and you tell the person you are showing love. Your wife does small thing instead of you to say, ah, honey, honey, this thing you are doing is not good. You go and smack her, you go and beat her, you go and, you go and kick her. Why did you do this? That is not love. If she does something that is not, is not right, correct her in love. 